Hi there, I'm Valerie Milano from the Hollywood Times. I'm the senior editor, and I would like to, to welcome our guest. Hello, my name is Arizara, and I am the writer and director of the short film, An Avocado Pit. And um, I am one of the lucky ones that have been able to see this wonderful short film. And um, I can't wait to delve into my questions. And I hope all of the Hollywood Times readers and viewers will be able to see it themselves because it is quite extraordinary. It's a beautiful film and um, it touched me deeply. Um, Ari. What is the meaning and the significance of the title, The Avocado Pit? Yeah, that's not like specific in the film. And right. that's a little bit on purpose so that we can have something to talk in the Q&As. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> by being trans uh, myself, I understood that most of our transition is focused in the past or in the future. We are not much present because we are in this urgency of becoming something and stop being other thing. Um, so I planted an, uh, an avocado pit uh, and I was very concerned because from a point it just stopped to grow. And I was like, what is happening with this avocado? So when I changed the vase where it was, I saw that it has like a lot of roots beneath trying to expand. So from there, I think I started to think about this metaphor of all that happens inside of us that you can't really see, but it's already there. So it's like a parallel to the transition, the gender transition. We are trans. You might not be able to see it or to validate it or whatever, but it's happening inside. And by happening inside should be more than enough you know so it's more for us to focus on our little changes on our processes not to have that urgency of running after something that will take some time to appear that is i just i love that idea what a, a great way to to describe an avocado one of my favorite fruits and and uh what a great way to, to name this film. Wow. So, excuse me, Larissa is beautiful, but she refers to herself in the third person as her. Um, is she recognizing her own duality or denying the reality that her must be a prostitute to survive and longs for legitimacy in a world that sees her as a fetish or is her a goal someone she hopes to be once her body develops to match who she knows she truly is mm -hmm. so uh that's curious what you say uh because larissa in the film i think that she says three times that she's not a prostitute and still by us seeing her on that corner with those uh, women we can't really say that she's not a prostitute even though she says it one time two times three times so that's something that it's in the film and it's written in a way that this question can come up so we can understand how we see the reality of trans women um when she refers at herself in the third person uh it's like to feel safe um sometimes it's hard for us trans people to communicate who we are without shame so sometimes by referring to ourselves as a third person it's almost like someone that we can see that we can validate but we know that for some people it's not the way they are seeing us you know so it's her way to find comfort while she's speaking of herself. And then getting to Claudio, uh, is, uh, he's openly hostile um, and vehemently denies his attraction at first, saying, I am not a fag. And Larissa counters with, I am not either. 
as the story progresses. He relaxes and seems to admit to, to his to his attraction. Is this typical of male mindset, you know, to mask any same sex attraction while exploring it, in your opinion? I think it's difficult for cis heterosexual men to validate their desires and their attractions uh, for someone that has the same genital as they have. Um, because Larissa is a woman, Larissa is not a man. Um, so he wouldn't have any problem with relating with Larissa. But because he thinks that she has uh, a penis, he suddenly feels triggered because in theory, she would be a man just because of the genitals. But that's not the reality. Gender is something very different from anatomic sex. So this is something that we want to deconstruct along the film and to be able to think about these possibilities and these um, political views of the world as separating gender from sex. Yeah, uh, Larissa uh, calls this um, a fetish, but Claudio counters after he's been with her for a while. I don't think this is a fetish, but it's not love either. He seems to progressively become more comfortable in Larissa's uh, company, but at the end you get the impression he is confused and regretful of the evening is it both or does he regret not taking it to the next level and truly exploring his attraction? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that the the end of the film is total, it's a responsibility of Larissa. It's a choice of Larissa. She chose not to be with him because she knows what to expect from him even though he might say it's not a fetish, he has a lot to understand. He lacks a lot of knowledge about himself and about her reality. And she doesn't want to be a teacher. She doesn't want to be in that place. She wants to be truly with someone who is in love with her, with her, with her or can become in love with her without these concerns of genitals and gender and oh my god I'm so confused you know um, I think that she's in the in a point that she knows what she deserves and she won't settle for less so the end of the film it's Larissa's empowerment Claudio it's more like a puppet uh, in the end um, he decided she doesn't want him and she and he leaves the party. Yeah, uh, it's just I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan <laughs> of yours. Um, the cine cinematography is wonderful and it captures the dark reality of, you know, of the transgender prostitute and their clients. Um, we, I know you're in Lisbon. Um is that where the movie is set? And, you know, is that where it was filmed in Portugal? Yes. Uh, the corner where we film, it's an iconic corner here in Lisbon from many, many, many years because uh, trans and travesty uh, women stopped there. So it's known for that. Um, and I think that it was very important to shoot there because in some way I can feel that we can captured the aura of the, the location, you know, and by having there Jo Bernardo, which is the older woman, I think it even rises more because Jo was one of the first trans activists in Portugal and she used to be a sexual worker. She worked on that corner. So when I see her there with the other girls, for me, it's like, this is amazing I, I i can't explain it's very political it's very empowering and it's also giving back to the community and to portray their stories what's the name i told you before we got on air that this is 
that I'm going to be there in October. What was that corner called? Kondu Khdondu. Okay. Easy it's for you street. to say. It's a street. And when you are going down the street, it will be on your right. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, <laughs> yeah, we can, we're going on the Doro River cruise. So, but we're going to be stopping and just can't wait to taste your wine and do all those good things. So, yay. <laughs> Finally, the score. Um, it's simple, just three tunes. Um, and they all work together to re reinforce, you know, the dark uh overtones of the film were any of those tunes written specifically for the film yes the the middle one was made by shinobi it's the instrumental from the point where where they get inside the car um that is made by shinobi and it's made film specific we talked about what tone we would like to have what frequencies i would like to be there and he just built it in an amazing way. Um, it was almost my first or second attempt. It was already there. Uh, Shinobi is very talented. Um, the first score belongs to Rez Mora, a trans non-binary Brazilian artist that is living sometimes in Lisbon, sometimes in New York. She travels a lot. And I met her here in Lisbon. And when I listened to her music, I was like, you... I need your music, so let's talk about this. Um, the, and the end track was the most difficult to find. I was uh, nights and after nights after nights searching for that song, and eventually it popped in a um, playlist from Queer Talents of Brazil. And when I started to listen to the song, it's like, oh, this is it. This is it. But I was already feeling very tired and I I didn't think it was possible to get that tune anymore. My goodness. Okay, before we close, is there anything else that you'd like to say about the film or about any other work that, that you're thinking of doing? Um, Ari? Yes, I can add some things. Um, about the film, I think that what it's amazing about it, it's bringing new narratives about transgender people and giving them power inside those narratives. Um, and about myself, I could say that this is one of my main concerns to bring to cinema new ways of approach transness with affection, with love, and trying to humanize trans people through love instead of death. Um, right now, I'm working on another short film, and I'm working on a feature film um, with Torino Film Lab. So I hope by the end of the year to have something to start to present and to apply to new funds. Well, I hope that the Hollywood Times can be included um, because I your work so. is amazing. Yes, it is. And how can our, our uh, viewers uh, uh, find you? Social media or? Yes, I'm website. very active on social media. Uh, my social media is underscore Arizara underscore. And my website is Arizara.com. Wonderful. So, and we're the Hollywood Times dot today. And our YouTube is the Hollywood Times official. And I am so glad that you took so much time for us today and sharing your beautiful film thank will, you we're putting the word mm. out and maybe i'll run into you on the streets of lisbon please let me know when you arrive <laughs> okay excellent thank you ever so much and um keep us posted on your other pieces um that would be fantastic i will thank you so much i really thank appreciate great work all right all right bye-bye